In this video, I want to talk about five books that have really made me, you know, a much more effective and a much more productive researcher. And I think, you know, if you're a PhD student or if you're an early career researcher and you're looking to write more papers, you want to, you know, be more effective and in general also have, you know, a more enjoyable and pleasant experience while doing research, then these five books will completely, I think, change your perspective on things and will really help you to boost your productivity and write more research papers. So if you're new to this channel, my name is Marek Kiczkowak and I run Academic English Now, where I help early career researchers write more research papers. And in this specific video, I want to talk about um, the best five books that I've read to help you increase your productivity um, and help you really to write more research papers on a daily basis. And I'm not going to be talking about academic publications per se, um, like, you know, academic books or journal publications, because, you know, you're probably sick and tired at this point of, of reading those. But uh, these books are not only incredibly helpful, but they're also incredibly well written. But at the same time, they're based on research. So they're not just some kind of, you know, invented stuff that some other guru says because they think it's true. You know, they're based on academic research, but they're written for a general audience and they're written really, really well. And I think they'll be incredibly helpful helpful for you. So the first book that I want to share with you is um, Range by David Epstein. And, you know, in, in this book, um, David tackles the, you know, the, the pervasive idea that really in order to, to be great at something, we just have to do one thing and block out everything else, you know, and you know, he compares at the very beginning in the opening chapter, he compares the story of Tiger Woods, um, the golfer, and Roger Federer, one of the best tennis players in history. And he shows like how, you know, Tiger Woods was, you know, from age three, basically, he was just playing golf all the time. And that was the only sport he ever played. On the other hand, Roger Federer didn't focus just on playing tennis until he was in his late teens. You know, he played all sorts of stuff, volleyball, football, and his parents really encouraged him to, you know, to, to have a range of sporting interests. And throughout this book, you know, David really argues that what we need, we really need more of people who have a wide range of interests because what happens is that you know a lot of us because we have to read so much research we become super hyper specialist focus on such a super hyper narrow area that nobody else is interested in like nobody is a linguist anymore you know people are you know cognitive or neuro linguists and things like that and even within neuro linguistics nobody is a neuro linguist anymore they're kind of studying a specific small brain region and you know how humor for example is uh, you know in uh, reflected in our brain, for example, when we tell jokes, right? So there is this super hyper specialization. And what, what this leads to, I've found for myself, is that, you know, people basically, researchers end up just doing the same thing over and over again, because they don't have other ideas. They're kind of in this black box. And, you know, what happens for me is that, you know, one of the reasons why I've been able to, to write so many papers um, so quickly and come up with with these ideas and research gaps is because I read widely. You know, you can see the bookshelf just behind me. I, I basically read like one book um, a week and I read fiction and non-fiction and, you know, really from anything. I've got books about like dinosaurs, ancient Egypt, um, business, philosophy, art, anything, you name it, you know, and when reading those books and that's what David shows here, you start getting, you know, incredible insights and incredible ideas uh, that leads to great papers and great research. And there's this fantastic example at the end of the book of this um, Chinese researcher who won the Nobel Prize. And, you know, what she discovered was, you know, one of the most effective medicines against malaria. And the only reason why she discovered it was that she was interested in traditional Chinese 
medicine. And, you know, it was something she studied at the university as well, apart from her medical training. But then it was just something that she was interested in. It was one of her um, hobbies, um, you know, to, to study Chinese, ancient Chinese medicine, to read about it and so on. And as she was doing it, she got this incredible insight and, and found, you know, um, one of the most effective cures for malaria. So range, definitely try to have a range of interests. Now, book uh, number two that I want to talk about is The Science of Self-Discipline by Peter Hollins. This is a fantastic book and it shows you how to be more disciplined. So the, probably one of the biggest problems that, that people have and why they can't achieve more is that they are not disciplined, you know? So achievement is not about motivation, you know? I'm hardly ever motivated to, you know, to continue writing papers. It's not something like, you know, eating an ice cream that you crave doing, you know? So what you need to do is to develop discipline, right? To be relentless and to just, you know, just get up every day and follow your goals and just do them, whether you're motivated or not. And in this book, Peter Holland shows you exactly, you know, how to how to really do that and how to avoid, you know, different temptations that are around us, how to avoid distraction. And what I really like about this book is that, number one, it's based on science. Peter Hollins is, is a researcher. So everything that you read here has been, you know, tried and tested in, you know, in peer reviewed research. But the second thing is that this book is incredibly practical. So it's not it's not an academic publication where you'll struggle to read it. You can literally read it in one day, right? Very easy to read and very practical. And the third thing that I like about it is that it's really applicable. So each chapter ends with, you know, bullet point prescriptions, you know, what you should do in order to get more self-discipline. So if you find yourself kind of, you know, not being able to, to write enough, if your progress isn't fast enough and you know that, you know, you should be doing difficult stuff, but you're not able yourself to, you're not able to bring yourself to do it, then read um, The Science of Self-Discipline. It will really help you. On that note, um, Atomic Habits by James Clear, right? This is an incredible book and James talks about how to develop habits. So another thing that I that I discovered is that, you know, really achieving greatness in anything is about, you know, just doing a lot of focused work over long periods of time. Again, it's not about motivation. It's not about, you know, having this insane talent on day one. It's not about having insane skills on day one. It's about making, you know, small incremental changes and developing better habits for yourself that ultimately will, you know, will have a compounding effect and you will start making exponential progress. And, you know, and in this book, James show you, shows you exactly how to do this. And to, to illustrate, you know, the, the power of, of habit, um, James gives this great example of um, the UK cycling team. And at that stage, that was probably, you know, over a decade ago, maybe 15 years ago, um, the UK cycling team was so, so bad that they couldn't even get sponsors. So like no cycling firm wanted to, to be on the British cycling um, t-shirts because, because the cycling team was so bad, right? That's how bad they were. And they got a new coach and, and that coach started, you know, making small changes every single day and instilling positive habits in the, in the team. And at the beginning, it seemed that those changes like wouldn't lead to anything. There was, there was no progress. Like for a year, you know, it just seemed like there was no progress. But all of a sudden, like the, that progress just exploded and became exponential, right? It just went like this. And they started winning medals. Uh, in the in the world um, cycling championships in the Olympics, you know they started winning Tour de France and stuff like this. They went from a team that couldn't get a sponsor for the T-shirts to one of the best cycling teams in the world simply by instilling better habits and making small changes 
every single day. So, you know, if you want to be more, more effective, you know, if you want to develop habits, not just, you know, in your professional academic life, but maybe there are things that you've always wanted to do, like, let's say, exercise or play the piano, right, or read more, but you're just not able to do this, you know, um, then read this book and it will really help you to develop habits. So that's um, Atomic Habits by James Clear. Now, the fourth book that I want to recommend, and this is probably, you know, if I could name one book out of these five, um, that would be my favorite, it's this, um, Deep, Deep Work by Carl Newport. It's an incredibly powerful book that really changed the way I work and that I view productivity. So what happens is that, you know, we are, we kind of grow to believe that we need to multitask, that multitasking is this holy grail. And the more we multitask and the more things we do, the better, right? Uh, we are led to believe that the, the more work in um, inverted commas we do, the better. But, you know, and we constantly also bombarded by all sorts of information from social media, you know, email, uh, we constantly have meetings with people and stuff like this. And Carl Newport shows you why, why this is, you know, a lot of nonsense and what you really need to do if you want to achieve high productivity is to do deep work. In a nutshell, you know, deep work is this very focused, deep work where you're just doing one thing and focusing on just one difficult thing for extended periods of time. And, you know, this can really skyrocket your productivity. And this is also really needed if you want to produce valuable, difficult work. You know, if you're writing an email, of course, you can at the same time be talking uh, to some to your best friend on the phone and also answering, sending a tweet and maybe chatting to someone on Messenger. Right. But if you want to do deep work and if you want to do meaningful research, you want to write research papers, you need to do deep work. You need to focus on just one thing, shut everything else and do this. And, you know, he gives great examples. You might be thinking, well, but I'm, you know, I'm so busy. You know, there are all these other things that I have to do. There are meetings. My supervisor wants me to do this. And then there's this to do. And I'm a professor. I have to teach as well. I have to mark students homework. I get that. But Carl Newport shows you like why these are just excuses and he gives you practical tips for how to actually achieve a deep state of focus. And just a very simple tip to do that is to block off your calendar. So just decide that, you know, for example, every every Tuesday and Thursday um, between 9 a.m. and 3 p.m., you're just writing papers and you're not doing anything else. Right. And, and just block it in your calendar. Nobody will be able to book a meeting with you. You know, switch off everything else. Switch off, you know, the internet if you don't need it. Delete Facebook, delete YouTube and all that kind of stuff. And just do this, you know. If, if you're a busy professor, you know, he shows examples of researchers at top universities in the world. And what they do is they have like, you know, weeks for example, where they're, where they're not teaching and they basically close their office and they just put a sign on their, on their office doors, literally closed, I'm writing research, don't knock. They switch off the, the cell phone, uh, they put an autoresponder on the email and they just disappear for a week, you know? And these tips um, allowed Carl Newport himself, who's a researcher, it allowed him to, in one year, I think he wrote 10 papers as the first author. 10 papers while um, he has, you know, normal, happy family life. He has a wife, he has two children and he never works at the weekend and he finishes his work at 5.30 every day. And by putting deep work into practice, he wrote 10 papers in one year. That's, that's how powerful this stuff is. Now, you might have noticed that, you know, all the books that I've recommended um, to you are all about kind of productivity discipline, you know, being more effective, being more focused, because really, you know, I think 90% of your success is that it's not really so much, you know, the skill of academic writing, um, because that's something that you can learn very quickly. But your success is really doing deep focus work, developing discipline and habits. But I thought I'd share with you, you know, probably my favorite um, book on um, academic writing. And it's English for Writing Research Papers by Adrian Walwork. It's a really kind of well-written book. 
And it's what I really like about it is that you know it's it's very easy to read, and he gives you specific, precise examples for what to do and what not to do, and how to basically write each part of the paper. So, you know, if academic writing is a struggle for you, this book will be really, really helpful. So, in this video, I went over you know the five five of my favorite books, you know, and let me know in the comments which of those you're going to read next. And maybe you've already read some of them. Um, have they helped you? Comment um, below. And if you're interested in working with me more closely to write more research papers and become a more productive researcher or a PhD student, then book a free one-to-one -one strategy session where we're going to identify your exact problems, specify your goals, and see if this is something that I can help you with. And the link to book that strategy session is somewhere in the description to this video.